Psalm 46 from verse 1. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear though the earth be moved, removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, even if the mountains will shake with the swellings thereof, there is a river. The river of the Holy Ghost. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God. The holy place of the tabernacles of the Mosa. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. He's talking to you. God shall help her. That right early. He's talking to a lady here today. God shall help her. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. objective is to understand the help of God. By way of introduction, God's help is the best help anybody can receive on the face of the earth. There are many people you know who can't help you. There are people who are present and cannot help. There are those who can help and are not present. God is the only one who is both present and he can help you. Have you ever lost anybody before or somebody lost someone before? And the cry, the major cry, was not that the person was lost, even though that was part of the cry. But who will do for me what this person has been doing? So the, the person who can help you was no longer present. When my mother passed, we visited one of our big aunties. And she cried and cried and cried. And out of the cry, something busted out of her mouth unconsciously. He said, now that your mother is no more, will you people continue to do for me what she was doing for me? What you were doing through her to me? We said, don't be, wor don't be worried, ma." It will continue even more. So, you come to times when the person who can help maybe is no longer present. Or maybe it's in a distance somewhere. Or the person who is present can do nothing for you. He's just around. He's doing nothing. It's available but not usable. Not relevant. But he said we have a God who can help and who is also present. He's dieless. He's changeless. He's limitless. He can't expire. He's unintimidated by age. 
unimpressed by time. But take note of the following things I'm about to say about the help of God. Number one, God's help. Say it this way. The help of God is the only help you can count on in times of trouble. He says he is the very present help in the time of trouble. The only help you can count on. Someone said that in prosperity your friends know you. But it is in adversity that you know who is your friend. And he is that friend that sticketh closer than the brother. The help of God is the only help you can count on for sure. In times of trouble. Secondly, the help of God is the cure for the fear of evil. Therefore, shall we not fear? Will we not fear? <laughs> Therefore, will we not fear? He's a very present help in time of trouble. Therefore, will we not fear? The help of God is the cure for the fear of evil. When God is helping you, there is not a mortal man under heaven to fear. There is not a demon to fear. There is not a witch to fear. There is not a wizard to fear. There is not a calamity to fear. The cure for the help of evil. Thirdly, the help of God is the shield from the heart of the enemy. From the heart of the enemy. No devil can hurt whom God is helping. <laughs> no witch, no wizard, no force from hell can hurt the man God has helped. For though the mountain should swell, even though the earth be removed. We are unshakable and unmovable. Unharmable. The help of God is the shield from the heart of the enemy. Number four, the help of God is key to victory in battle. Oh Lord, will thou not help us? Neither know we not what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Jehoshaphat and the army of Israel crying in the midst of battle. Second Chronicles chapter 20. You read all the way from verse 12 all the way. Oh God, will you not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do. We are helpless in this case, but our eyes are upon you. Psalm 89 verse 19. Sorry, 89 verse 19. Then thou speakest in vision to thy holy one and sayest, I have laid help upon one that is, that is mighty. That word mighty is the word warrior, gibor, upon a warrior. God's help is key to victory in battle. You can't be helped of God and be a loser in life. You can't be helped of God and be a loser in the battles of ministry, the battles of marriage, the battles of finance, the battles of your destiny, the battles of your career. You cannot be helped of God and be a victim in battle. Finally, the help of God is key to the health of man. H-E-A-L-T-H. -E the help of God is key to the health of man. Health. Those sick people 
in the Old Testament, is in the New Testament. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Means help me, help me, have mercy on me. The help of God is key to the health of man. But Psalm 42 verse 5. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? For I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. 43 verse 5. What is the help of his countenance doing? Look at this now. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Now, this, this one and the one I just read, 42, 5, 43, 5, word for word. But there is one slight difference. Why are, the first one says, why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted in me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. This one says, who is the health of my countenance? So the help is equal to the health. That's revelational equation. A equals to B. B equals to C. Means A is directly equal to C. I shall praise him for the help of his countenance. I shall praise him who is the health of, his, of my countenance. So the help of his countenance supply the health of my life. When God is your help, he supplies your health. When you apply for his help, you have applied for health. That is why if someone here says, Father, help me, and you are in, the, in, the, in any situation of ill health, you are applying for health. I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance. By the help of God today, whatever the devil has fired into your body is returning back to that devil. What is the secret of the help of God? Who are the people that secure the help of God? What are the secrets of the help of God? Number one is personal helplessness. Personal helplessness. Personal helplessness. When you are personally helpless, not before the devil, but before God, it's a difference. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time when you are helpless. Everybody who is too braggadocious before God can never secure his help. People full of themselves are empty of God. The more helpless you are, the more of his help you get. People who are too ostentatious will be bankrupt of mercy. One day I went to preach in McCordy in Benway State. Many years ago, this would be like maybe 15 years ago. And I, my, my schedule had been very, very restless. Overworked myself, exerted myself, I've preached back to back all manner. So when I slept in the night, when I slept, I slept till morning. I didn't pray the way I should have prayed. I didn't study the Bible the way I should have studied. And when I woke up, it was already time for the service in the morning. Exactly time. What do I do? When shower jumped into the car straight and entered into that service on the way going very helpless. What to preach? How to minister, revelations, and so on. Lord, well, <laughs> this is not deliberate. I need your mercy. Just help me. And I stepped into the meeting. 
The kind of things I saw that day, I never saw in meetings where I fasted and prayed for long. Very drastic, diverse manifestations of God. On the way back to the hotel, I asked God, I said, what happened? What happened? I didn't pray as I should. He said to me, what I will never forget in life. He said, you were very helpless. And your helplessness provoked my almightiness. Your helplessness just invited me to action. When you confirm that you are you are, you are not equal to couldn't do nothing. Then I stepped in to do what only me can do. Your helplessness provoked my almighty. Say my strength was made perfect in your weakness. And I will never forget it for life. Let's calm down. It's not of him that we let or run it. It's of God that showeth mercy. The race is not for the swift. Ecclesiastes 9 11. I returned and found out under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding. But favor, but nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance, which is called the grace of God. Happeneth to all. Am I communicating at all? Does it mean you shouldn't pray? Does it mean you shouldn't fast? Does it mean you shouldn't study the word? No. Pray all you can. Fast all you can. Worship all you can. Do everything that you can. At the end of the day, don't rely on that effort. At the end of the day, don't say, I deserve to see this because I fasted for 21 days. I deserve to see this because I did this. It is of him that showeth mercy. Not by power. Not by might. But by my health. By my spirit. Saith the Lord. Is God speaking to somebody here? That is her personal helplessness. The more helpless you become as a pastor. The more helpless in his hands. You become as a person. The more of his almightiness. The more of his help. You will see. Number two is intense prayerfulness. Okay? Now, so, so that, that, that doesn't look contradictory now. That was why I told you, pray all you can, do all that you can, but still rely on his help. But prayerfulness provokes his help too. He said, let us come boldly to the throne of grace. That is the place of prayer. That is where we obtain mercy and find grace to help. In time of need. When we were medical students, Christian medical students, we used to tell ourselves, because medicine was more like a ministry of its own. And it had the capacity to, de to deny you of spiritual life if you are not careful. We told ourselves, pray as if your success depend on praying. And study as if it is only through studying that you can succeed. Then leave the rest in the hands of God. And it worked. There are those who pray and don't read. There are those who read and don't pray. We say, do both intensely. That is how this matter is. Be absolutely helpless as if there is nothing you can do that can change anything. And be absolutely prayerful as if you must pray very well or you see no result. The throne of grace is the place of mercy. The throne of grace is the place of prayer and is the place of mercy. It's the place of hell. Without a doubt, anybody who is habitually and perpetually prayerless can never see the help of God. The testimony I gave just now was not a, a lifestyle. It was a solitary incident in which, oh, I was absolutely helpless. I didn't pray as I should have prayed. And then God said, look, I will help you. Very, very important. That is point number two. 
Intense prayerfulness. Number three is absolute hopefulness. Hopefulness. I will yet absolute hopefulness. We read Psalm 42 verse 5. He said, don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. Why are you cast down? Don't be discouraged, my soul. Don't be disquieted. Don't be restless. Hope in God. For he is the help of your countenance. So there is a connection between hope in God and help from God. You cannot be hopeless and be helped. Hopelessness equals helplessness from God. You can't receive the help from God if you, if you have lost your hope in God. Nobody can be hopeless and be helped. That is, you came to the point where you are completely discouraged. You have lost all hope. You can't be helped. Psalm 121 verse 1. I will look up to the hills. From whence cometh my help. Look up means hope. Lift up your eyes. Be in expectation. From whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. What is that saying to you? It doesn't matter what the devil throws at you. It doesn't matter what you. It doesn't matter. Where you found yourself now in life. Never ever lose hope. Never ever ever lose hope. Somebody wanted to marry you. Refused to re marry you. Never lose hope. You applied for jam. How many times you couldn't get jam? Never lose hope. This ministry seems not to be working. Never lose hope. Am I communicating at all? Look at the neighbor. Say never lose hope. Never lose hope. Tell somebody, say, when you are down to nothing, God is up to something. Never lose hope. The widow of Zarephath said, I'm gathering sticks to eat and die. Say, don't say so. Don't say so. It is not over until God says it is over. And God will not say it is over until you win. In the game of life, God is a referee. He won't blow the whistle against you for as long as you are not yet winning. He will only blow the final whistle when you have won the game. Is God speaking to someone here? Shout the loudest, amen. Lift your right and say, I refuse to lose hope. I cannot lose hope. I shall not lose hope. Take your seat. The help of God. So first, it's personal helplessness. Two, intense prayerfulness. Three, absolute hopefulness. Psalm 146 verse 5. Absolute hopefulness. Happy is he that has the God of Jacob for his help. Why? Whose hope is in the Lord his God. So there is a link between hope and help. If your hope is intact, your help is on the way. What I say? If your hope is intact, your help is on the way. If your hope is intact, your help is on the way. Finally, what is the secret of the help of God? Number four will amaze you. I call it brutal fightfulness. Brutal fightfulness. That is the spirit of a fighter. The bulldog tenacious spirit. Laser beam doggedness.
Psalm 89 verse 19 that I read to you. He said, Then thou speakest in vision to your Holy One and said, I have laid help upon one that is mighty. He's talking about David. I thought he would say, I have laid hands. He said, I have laid help. So I realized help can be laid. Then I looked at it, one that is mighty. Someone who is already mighty doesn't need help. But he said, one that is mighty. Then I searched. And I realized that word mighty is Hebrew gibor. It is the word warrior. It is the word violent. Aggressive. Ferocious. You see, I am looking for a fighter to supply help for. I have placed help on a fighter. That was why he was talking about David because he was a brutal fighter, man. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he will defy the armies of the living God? When God heard that, he said, take help. Finish him. I was keeping my father's flock and there came a, 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 a bear or there came a lion. He said, and I went after him. I went after him. I smote him. Ah, David, you are like this. Take help. Some people fear and say, Oh, the way we talk with audacity and ferocity against the situations in the land, are you not afraid? I can tell you, the one who can harm us, they haven't born his father, they haven't born their grandfather, they are buried in their planning sessions. The one that can waste you, they have not bombed them. Somebody shout fire! Take your say. Dogs don't pursue lions. He said, without our dogs. Many people are too timid to be helped by God. I have laid help on him that is aggressive. I am helping who is ferocious. I am helping who is a violent warrior. I am helping who is dogged, rugged. I am helping who is going to dare the devil. Eyeball the devil and the witches and the occult and tell them pack to hell. Devil, you can't stop me. Well, it's God is looking for someone who will tell that devil, whether you like it or not, I will be married. I will invite you for my wedding. I will, you will see my children. I will be established in the land of the living. I, you won't even see my tears, devil. You won't see my sweat, devil. You can't stop me. We are the unstoppable generation. We are the generation no devil can stop. Somebody shout, power! Today you need to get violent concerning your situation, concerning your condition, concerning, concerning your affliction, concerning the oppression, concerning your confrontation, concerning the, 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 the chronic stagnation of your life, concerning the things that are not going well. You need to get aggressive in the spirit. Then you are qualified for help. People think that God is looking for who to who is crying and weeping and shaking like Shakespeare and jellyfish before the devil and say, okay, let me help you. No. He lays help on people with might, with audacity, with ferocity, with sagacity, with capacity, with capability, with tenderosity. Did you read Isaiah chapter 28 verse 5 to 6? In that day shall the Lord of hosts be for a crown of glory and a diadem of beauty to the residue of his people and for a spirit of judgment to him that is running from the devil. 
and he will supply strength to the one that is timid in battle. No. Strength to them that return the devil's arrow back to sender. He will supply strength to anyone ready to stand in battle and turn the battle back to the gate. It doesn't help people who have turned their back on the devil and are running. It helps people who stand and say, hey, hey. If the devil say, hey, they say, hey, hey, hey. Brutal fightfulness. And for somebody today, if the only thing that comes upon you is a fighter spirit, then you have not wasted your time. Stand up on your feet. Lift up your two hands. 